So for the next three class days, uh, for 228, 229, and 230, um, I'm going to concentrate heavily on getting good quality line drawings out of Rhino. And I found in teaching this class over semester after semester that it's one thing to learn how to, to create good 3D models and then to create good renderings out of those 3D models. But it's another thing to have spent all this time in, auto, in uh, Rhino and not have good plans and sections and elevations, the traditional drawings that we're looking for in an architectural presentation. And so I'm going to, over the course of the next three classes, kind of walk through how do you create these types of drawings so that you don't waste your time spending, you know, making this great 3D model and then not be able to use it to create the plans and sections and the elevations that you need. And so we're going to work through those. I'm going to start today with the simplest version, which is a, an elevation. Uh, it doesn't involve any cutting or any section planes or anything like that. And we will get to uh, more complicated setups where we do a section and we do a plan. Uh, and those will start to make more sense as we, as we get there. So even though it is the day before Thanksgiving and turnout is not what I would like it to be, um, I'm going to repeat myself three times because we're going to do this three times. So I don't, I don't feel too bad about doing it. Remember, I postponed this lecture. It was supposed to be on Monday um, because there was even less of you here on Monday. <laughs> so we're, we're making a step up uh, by at least there being a few people here. So we're going to work through this and we're going to create a building elevation today. Um, by itself, I'll teach you the process in Rhino to create the line drawing. When you create the line drawing, you have to do a little bit of post-processing. And depending on which applications you're more comfortable in, um, you may do some post-processing in AutoCAD. You may do some post-processing in Illustrator. For me personally, I would do it in Illustrator. Uh, but it's again, it's kind of dependent on what feels right to you. Um, it will not be perfectly ready to hang up on the wall when it comes out of Rhino. We have to do a little bit of extra work. So uh, I will show you that part of it. I'll show you the Illustrator part of it, even though technically speaking, Illustrator is not part of this class. It's part of 135. I know almost all of you took 135 anyway, so you remember back to Illustrator. So you, you should be a little bit familiar with what I'm doing. OK, so I have my file open. And what I'm doing um, for this particular elevation view, I'm probably not going to destroy my file, so I don't really need to do a save as. It's not a bad habit to get into when we do these kinds of drawings to do a save as, because when you do the plan or you do the section, obviously you're going to cut your drawing and change the materials and that sort of thing. I'll go ahead and do a save as just for practice. Uh, and I'll call this the master site. And instead of being the section, this is going to be the elevation drawing. And I'll go ahead and click Save. And that way I have a version that if I end up messing things up, it's not the end of the world. Okay. The, by the way, everything that I'm doing today is written out on the Digital Tools site. If you go to Assemblies under Tutorials, Assemblies, down here we've got Elevations from Rhino 10.8. Um, and it walks you through step by step everything that I'm going to do today. So it is there if you get lost in the process. OK, so the first thing I need to do is I need to set up the elevation view. And it's relatively easy for me because my building is on the normal axes. If your building is off axes, uh, you're going to have to set up a custom view uh, to get the actual elevation. So the southeast elevation, for example, instead of just the south elevation. Since mine's already set up, I can just go to Set View. And I can pick one of the presets, the left, the right, the front, the back, etc. I'll uh, I'll try a, a few different setups here because I'm not sure which one it is. Um, let's try front. Yeah, front is pretty good. Okay, so I have the front view here, which is not bad. But notice that in this front view, I have this red plane that's in the way. I can't see my building as a true elevation in this view. This is the the ocean that I wrapped up that giant dinner plate to cover up to the sky. Uh, so I'm just going to simply hide it. I'll type hide, and it'll go away. The other option would be to just turn off the ocean layer. So let me show it. And then I can turn off the ocean layer, etc. There may be a slight problem if I do a full color rendering as part of my drawing, because I won't have the ocean in the background of this. But we're concentrating on the line drawing, not so much the, the ocean part of it. So I have this uh, set up. 
first thing that I want to do is get a view that seems about right for my elevation so that I'm seeing enough of my building and enough of the context around it. Um, this, this feels pretty good. I'll go ahead at this point and save my view. So I'll go to set view, named views, and we will call this south elevation. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And now I have the south elevation view saved, I thought. There it is, south elevation, which means I can return to that view again if I want to. So with the south elevation view saved, I'll leave it up here. And I'm going to use the show camera. So I'll go to set camera, show camera. Why can't I see it? Oh, it's, I'm on top of it. Uh, and that will show in the other views. Let's use this view, for example my rectangular target of my camera. And because it's an elevation view, it's a really long triangle. So we're used to those narrow ones that are the wide angle perspectives. Uh, because this is in uh, parallel projection, it's going to be really long like that. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and draw. Uh, let me go to, I'm going to change this to wireframe just so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle using the points of this. And this is kind of important because I want to be able to align this particular view, the line drawing to the rendering. So I need to know size. And can you do it arbitrarily afterwards in Illustrator? Yes, but this makes it a lot easier as a process. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'll use the, not the rectangular plane, just a regular rectangle. And I'm going to use this rectangle, the three points rectangle. And I'm going to go from that point to that point, and I'll drop it down to the center of my rectangle. So I now created that line, or that rectangle. You guys see that rectangle? Then I'm going to go ahead and scale it from this point by 2 to get it the full size. So I used the three points of my camera to draw the rectangle, and then I scaled it so that it's the full size of my camera. Okay. Which, if we look carefully at south elevation, you may or may not on the projector be able to see a faint yellow line right at the edge. Okay, You'll see it on your screen a little bit better. That faint yellow line then represents the rectangle view that I'm actually creating. Okay, So I have that rectangle view. And I'm going to use a command next that's called make 2D. And I would argue that this is one of the most powerful commands that's built into Rhino. Um, it allows you to take a 3D object and make a line drawing based on whatever perspective view you're seeing. So if you had a perspective, for example, you could make 2D of that perspective and get a flat line drawing of that perspective. We're going to do it for the elevation. So the easiest thing to do is to actually show you it in, in process here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new layer. And let's pull it out of that layer stack down at the bottom. I'm going to call it make 2D. And I'll make it active just in case so that I'm, I'm separate and apart. Then in the south elevation view, I'm going to type make 2D. And it's going to ask me to select objects to draw. I'll go ahead and type all and then enter. So it selects everything. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter when done. It brings up the 2D drawing options. So I do want the current view. right? Then I have some other options. I can show tangent lines, I can show hidden lines, and I can maintain source layers. Okay? This takes a little bit of forethought as to do I want everything separate when I move into Illustrator, so all of my layers to be preserved, or do I want to have just a visible and hidden lines layers? Okay? And it depends on how you're kind of sorting it out as to whether those are an advantage or not. Okay. For right now, I'm going to keep it simple and not maintain the source layers, but I am going to show my hidden lines. And down here, layers for make 2D objects, these are the layers that it's going to assign objects to. Okay. So I'll go ahead and say OK, and we'll let it process. And this takes a little bit of time.
So clearly that's an exercise in patience, but it did get there. <laughs> and so uh, once it's done, obviously the command finishes. And I think part of the problem was I had the furniture selected, so it had to create all the lines of the furniture as well. But once it's, it's done, nothing seems to have been created, except that if we zoom out in the top view and we look over here, we have a line drawing of our building. And if I, if I look at it in the perspective view, this might start to make a little bit more sense. So right there, flattened out for us, is the drawing of my building. Okay. So if I look at it in the top view, there it is. You see that I created that rectangle which represents my view here. That allows me to get rid of all these extra lines. So I'll use this rectangle right there. And right there, that little piece there. And then I can use trim, and we can get rid of the, the stuff that really doesn't matter. All of those pieces. I'll hit Enter to finish. And then I will select just those objects, which represent my building itself. And I'm going to go to File, Export Selected. And I'm going to choose, instead of Rhino, I'm going to choose Adobe Illustrator.ai. And let me put it into the correct folder here. We're on 228. And let me do a new folder for fall of 2016. OK, but before I actually save it, and we'll call this front and fall 2016. Before I actually save it, I'm going to go to Options. And I want, at this point, to specify a scale for this object so that I could actually say that this is, this is working. And this is where the little assembly tutorial that goes through what I'm doing helps, because it'll tell us what to do. So if we wanted a quarter inch equals a foot, we have to do a little bit of math. It would be 48 inches equals 1 inch. Okay. So 48 would be uh, 4 feet equals, uh, or 48 inches would be 4 feet equals 1 inch. Okay. So let's go back here, and we'll say that this is 48 to 1. And we'll go ahead. We're not going to worry about exporting the viewport boundary, because we're only exporting our selected section here. And then we'll go ahead and say OK. And so it'll be saved as front elevation fall of 2016. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. Again, it pops up the options. We already set them. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And we have now have the line drawing portion of the building. So let me go ahead and open that in Illustrator so we can see what we have. So I'll go to File and then Open. And we're going to open up their front elevation of fall 2016. Ah, I forgot something. So when I did the export, it's relative to where point zero zero is. So if you do the export and it doesn't fit on your artboard, mine happened to fit on the very large artboard, if it doesn't fit, uh, you may have to move the line drawing to point zero zero before you do the export. You can run out of trouble there. Um, I'll go ahead and just select it and then move it um, so that it's down here on my artboard. Let me zoom in. All right. So let me zoom out just a little bit more. So at this point, the page size is this white sheet. And my drawing is significantly bigger than that. So I'm going to use the uh, artboard tool, which is over here on the left side, to adjust the page to match my overall drawing. So I'll do it there. And remember, this is at a quarter inch equals a foot. So it's a scale drawing that I can then use. OK, so I now have two layers. I have a hidden layer and a visible layer. Well, I want the visible layer to end up on top of the hidden layer, because I want it to show 
uh, as, as uh, stronger. The other thing is that by default, the hidden layer is colored white. So your selections are hard. So I like to change these colors of the layers. So I'll double click and change so that maybe the uh, make 2D visible lines are green. And this is just the layer color. And what that does is when I select a line, say this line, it shows up in green. Okay, other than, other than black. It just makes it a little easier to work with. So then I want to go ahead and I want to select all of the objects that are on the hidden layer. And so if I click right over here, I can click that little box and it will s select everything that's on that particular layer. Okay, it's a little illustrator trick. So by default, all of these lines are uh, white in color. So I need to change them to be a color. So I'll double click on my stroke color and we'll change it to be like a shade of gray or something like that. And then they all show up, which is good. We can see them there. It's important to make them a little bit lighter. And then I can go back and I can select same stroke color to get them all again. And let's change their stroke type to be a dashed line. And maybe we'll do a dash of like two by two, something like that. If this option isn't showing, click the little fly out menu. If it's just showing the weight, click show options, and then you can choose to have it a dashed line. And my line weight, I don't know, maybe 0.5. I, may, I might say in this, what's a good line weight? Nope, I said 0.5, and I did 4 by 4. So let's go ahead and change that to 4 by 4. All right, so now you can see all of the hidden lines show up as dashed lines, which is useful in the overall presentation. And all of my building lines show up as nice solid lines. Okay? Now, of course, there are lines that really shouldn't be there. Like these foundation lines probably don't need to be there. So I'll go in and do some touch up. We can get rid of those pieces. We can get rid of these pieces. Let's get rid of that rid of those two. Yeah, something like that. This line really shouldn't be there because that's continuous across. We see the pool. That little piece there can go away. So I'm just doing some cleanup, okay? And which is which is to be expected. You know, maybe some of these uh, hill lines really should go away because they're distracting. I mean, you can sort out what's what's appropriate uh, for what's left. And perhaps you need to you know thicken up some lines. So I could select these hidden lines or these. Um, hill lines here. And I could say, you know what, they really should be thicker so that I have a nice base for my model. All right, something like that. And it starts to provide some weight. So you see I'm creating the line drawing out of this. Um, if I did the export, instead of doing it as just visible and hidden, if I said maintain source layers, in the layer stack, I'd have under visible I'd have subdivisions for all the different layers. So I could go through and select the walls or the windows and change the line weights as appropriate for all of those. So it can be really powerful, but if you have hundreds of layers, it can be a little daunting at the same time. So I've started simple with just, with just this setup. Okay, but let's say that I want to add just a little bit more texture. I have this beautiful model that's left here. Maybe I want to add a rendering behind this object. And so I could do the full color rendering in this view uh, of the south elevation, and I could put it behind the drawing. But a lot of times, we just want some subtle shadows. And so hidden on the Digital Tools site, under the V-Ray Quick Rendering Setups, so let me go back up here. If I go to Resources, V-Ray Materials Library, this Quick Rendering Setups, you may have noticed toward the bottom, there's something called a clay rendering. The clay rendering settings um, will load up basically a white backdrop and some different settings for just some basic shadows. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and download the VizOpt file for this. And it references what we're doing today as part of it. So I'll go ahead and download this. Let me save the link as. 
we can save it into today's folder. And I'll come back to my Rhino file. Now, obviously, when I load up this set of settings, it's going to override all the settings that I had before. So that's part of doing the save as. This is the elevation drawing version. I'm not going to screw up the other daytime settings or whatever that I previously had set up. If you were worried about it, you were using one file to do this, um, at least save your, vis your current VisOp so you can go back. Right? For my case, it doesn't matter. We'll go ahead and load the um, files here. I thought I saved it into that folder. Maybe not. Let me save it again. Oh, sorry. Wrong folder. Let's save it right there. And then we'll go ahead and find it. There it is. So the clay render. So I'll go ahead and click Open. And it will override a bunch of my settings. And at this point, we'll make the south elevation my active viewport. And we'll go ahead and let me go into options. I'm going to go to output. And I'm going to unlock the output, get the view aspect, because it might be slightly different, lock it. And then I want to do a quick test render to see if it's turning out correct, if the settings are OK. So let me go to you know, maybe 200 by 91. We'll do a quick render here. These should be very, very fast in their renderings. They shouldn't take long at all. If I zoom in and blow this up, yeah, we're getting some basic shadows on the buildings. Okay, It's a little bit yellow here. Um, I can fix that after the fact in Photoshop. I could turn it to black and white. Uh, I could adjust a few of the settings. Um, if I did my camera and I adjusted the exposure here, maybe to 200, it might not be quite so yellow. Let me go into my options. And let me go to output. And I'm going to really beef up the size. Okay, We'll do maybe 3,000. And again, because this is such an easy render, there's no materials, you can feel free to beef up the size a bit. So we'll go ahead and render this. And like I said, it moves pretty fast. All right, so there it is. It's done. Um, my lights are still working. So whatever lights I had, uh, I had that little bar, the rectangular light lighting the top edge of my building. That's why that's a little bit lighter. Those are obviously still working. I'll go ahead and I'll save this into today's folder again. And I'll call this front. Front elevation clay render. And I can, because I have the size set exactly the same, I can go to File and then Place, and I can drop in that clay render file. There it is. And I can use the free transform tool and make it exactly the size. of that export. And 
all of that clay render lines up perfectly with my line drawing. Right? So that's why I made sure that I had that export so that everything would line up correctly. Now in this particular case, uh, it looks like I'm off slightly. There you go. Uh, let me press Control-0 so we can zoom out. I really don't like the color of this. I'd like to tone that down a little bit, maybe make it black and white. Um, so I could go back, open that, um, this file in Photoshop and, and change that and adjust that. So let me quickly do that. And this is why you can see that everything kind of ends up coming together, right? You took 135, at least a lot of you did. Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, it all feeds into now we're in Rhino. Uh, so let me go ahead and quickly open that clay render with Photoshop. And I'm doing this just as practice for you guys as well. There it is. I'm going to do a new adjustment layer with a channel mixer. And I'll turn it to monochrome so that we have just a gray background. And remember, under presets, there may be one that ends up looking a little bit better than the others. And you'll have to decide which one feels right as you go through the presets. Once you have one set the way you want it, we'll go ahead and just save this. And I'm going to override the existing, make it a JPEG. Yep, go ahead and replace it. Say OK. And we can upload the, the gray version to it. Okay? It just stripped out that, that bit of color. Okay? Now maybe I want a little bit more uh, texture to come in here. Um, I can do that as well. I'm, I'm coming back to reference this. Right, so we got through all of this. We set up our line weights, etc. I may want to put a little bit of a grunge texture into the background on part of this. So I can do that if I want to. Okay, that's an option. It's just a matter of placing in an image. I'll go to File and then Place. And I can find some kind of a background texture, something like this. I right, like that. And I can apply it on maybe a Lighten blending mode. Do a multiply. You know what? Let me put it inside. I'm not happy with how it's turning out. Go away. Let's do it for. Oh, that's because I'm in Photoshop. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. There we are. Let me go to File and then Place. Let's take this. Zoom it out a little bit. I just want it to apply up here in that region. Okay, so let me create a new layer. Let's move that onto that layer, drop it down into the back. And I'm going to leave that there for a second. I need this region to be painted in. So let me go ahead and duplicate the visible lines layer. And I'm going to rename this to be Live Paint. And I always do make that duplicate just in case I screw something up on the layer itself. And so let's select everything. Oops. Let's turn everything off except for this layer. Select it all, Live Paint. There we go. And I'm going to make a Live Paint group, and I'm going to paint just the sky. And we'll paint it with a bright color so that I can see it. There it is. When I'm done, I'll click Expand. And I can now select just that region. And I'm going to put it down here on layer 3. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Sorry. Give me just this piece. There we go. 
and put that down. I'll turn off the live paint layer altogether. Now I have these two. I'm going to go ahead and make a clipping mask. So let me go make clipping mask. And now I've clipped it just for that particular piece. And then I can turn the rest of this back on. Let's drop this back up a little bit higher. And now I have that part of the background. Okay. I could also take this object and I can change it under opacity, how it's applying. So I could apply it as a multiply mode. So we have it showing through. I could apply it as a lightning mode. So it depends on what the look is that you're going for. So these are just like in Photoshop where you can apply different um, textures. So something like that might be the right look to it. You guys can't see it as well as I can. You can also adjust the opacity. So let me go into multiply because you can see it better. And then I could adjust the opacity so that it's not quite as strong. But it just kind of makes it a little bit not so stark. Okay? It's all about the look and, and what feels right for what you're trying to do um, in this. Okay? So I'll go ahead and turn back on my hidden lines. Which, why are these not showing? Oh, let me create. This object should have been below. Sorry, sometimes even I can get screwed up in my layers. It's because I didn't name my layers. <laughs> All right, so that object that I placed should have been on its own layer. Now it's on its own layer. Now I can see the hidden lines that I was trying to see that weren't there. We can turn back on the sky layer there. And now we have both the hidden lines and the sky, right, if we zoom in. So really, it, I should take a little bit more time and darken up a few of the lines. But essentially, because of the work that I put into Rhino making the 3D model, I was able to create a two-scale line drawing that represents the elevation of my building relatively easily. Okay? Now that I have all of this set up and I have the saved view set up, etc., if I made a change to my Rhino drawing, I could remake 2D and get the line drawing again relatively easily. Does that make sense? So it's really, this is one of those things that you have to get in the habit of and, and really know how to do. Because when you get into something like 220 and you've, you've spent all this time creating a beautiful Rhino model, you want to be able to make these sorts of line drawings out of it without a lot of extra work. Right? The worst thing that you could do is go back and have to redraw the elevation of a building when you've already spent the time doing the 3D model. So as we move forward, when we get back from Thanksgiving break, we will do the plans for the building, and we'll do the, elevate, uh, do the um, sections of the building. And so we'll do line drawings for both of those so that you have all three. As part of your final for this class, you will have to show me, I think it's two of these three. So a plan and an elevation, an elevation and a section, a section and a plan, you pick two of the three. Okay. So this is important. Right? Starting on it is a good thing. Okay. Finishing up your modeling is at this point is probably a good thing too. Are there any questions? No? All right. I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving break. <laughs>